Hello and welcome to the Splendor tutorial. Today we are actually not doing anything new, but a tutorial we I have shown earlier. It is only this is a much shorter version on how to do that. It is the cloaking effect. I have a 30 or so minute tutorial. Can't remember exactly how long. This um, you don't actually create the nodes that it uses to generate the effect. They are given in a Blender file. The, the, sorry about that. Blender file, which is avail link is available in the description. And then, so we'll get started. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is just take the scene, delete all the objects except just the camera, go into render settings, set the shading alpha to be, instead of being the sky, have it transparent. So that way, and I'll show you why later, it'll make sense later. Next, we are just going to check use nodes. Then you are going to add an image and the movie clip. So these, are, so these are the two main nodes. Next, you're going to need to get the node group and disconnect the image from the comprietizer. So next, you're going to actually need to get this node group that generates the effect. So under File, go to Appendix, Appended, or something like that. And go to wherever you have the Blender file you downloaded it, and then, and then when you click that file, it opened up into a bunch of folders you never see anywhere else. All these folders go to the Node Tree folder. There's going to be something called Cloak Group. Get that one, not Cloak Group 011. I can't figure out how to get rid of that. It was an early test, so just select that and click Appendix. Now that doesn't actually add it. It just puts it in with a Blender file so you can access it when you want to. Also, this viewer down here, we are going to switch to the render result so we can see what we're doing. All right, so then we are going to open up the video we'll be using. I, this is also in the link here or in the, in the description towards the bottom. So go open that up in both the image and the movie. What the image will do is it'll freeze it on just the first frame, which is really this is really useful for the effect. Next, add group, and then this is the group we got into the program. So you can see there's quite a there's one output and quite a few inputs. Really, it's it's nothing complicated. You just need to start by the render layer, connect render layer node image to render input, connect the alpha to render alpha. Next, down here with image connect the image to background and the movie clip image to movie clip and then connect the final image into there so that is all you need to do and you have it all set up it is as you can see here it's it's the close it's the effect here already and that's good to go however just as an example of it won't this effect only works when you have your camera absolutely still on a tripod and even then you have some glitches like if if you look closely the swing in the original clip here no in the original clip the swing is swinging back and forth a little bit that's creating up enough motion that it's confusing it's telling it to cloak use that cloak effect on anything moving this is moving so we need to tell it to not apply the effect there so that is what some of these of these, these two inputs are for. So then what we so what we use those inputs for is we're going to add a node. We're going to add a box mask. And what this will and then to make sure we got this right, we need a viewer. And we're just going to see what we're doing the best. We're going to overlay going to add the movie clip into the viewer. See what we're doing. Check backdrop to make sure it's there and fit, just to get it all straight. Okay, next, this creates a mask layer. Anything inside of this box will not be overlaid with a cloak effect. So we need to connect this to one of these two extra mask inputs. It says optional, apparently it's an optional input. And next we just need to edit the size and placement of this box until it's over the swing but doesn't affect anything else. See there, it's, so then that means the swing will now not be cloaked over anymore. 
that's one other handy thing that's built in. All right, and that's just about it. It's really simple. Now, if you wanted to have them fade in, the controls for fading in and out are already here. So you need to decide where you want to start and start fade the fade in. Hover, hover over the cloak fade, press I. Decide where you want to finish it. Drag this all the way up, press I again. And he will fade in and will fade in slowly between those two frames. And when he's not, and when it's completely faded out, it is just the distorted background showing. Here. So I hope you like this tutorial. If you want more information on what this does, go to the 30 minute tutorial here, and it'll explain what all of this even means and how to create it for your own. Thanks very much for watching.